Immigration. It's blowing up in the news. From children caged like animals, tear gas being ordered by the president, to a young Guatemalan girl dying of dehydration at the border. There has to be a solution that everyone can agree upon. But what do we really know about immigration? The reason I got into immigration law was because I was able to meet individuals that uh, had very compelling life stories and had given up a lot and taken a lot of risks to look for something different and to find security and stability in their life. And I think it's very hard not to have those interactions without uh, having your personal views um, changed as well. I often talk about the, the debate that goes on politically is about immigration and not about immigrants, or that it's about immigrants in general as opposed to about specific immigrants. Even people that are very anti-immigration will call me and tell me that they have an employee or a friend of theirs that they know doesn't have legal status that they want to help out. And they view that as the exception rather than the rule. And I think that it's pretty clear it's the other way around. The very, very large majority of people that are here without status are good people, family people trying to live their lives, trying to support their families, trying to stay out of trouble. Knowing that most of the clients that I see and the most of the clients that I help are, uh, are like that, or not to feel uh, strongly that, that the immigration laws should be more favorable to people like that, that they should direct towards keeping families together, towards making sure that if somebody is a good person and doesn't have any type of a record, that they're able to stay with their children, that their children are able to have the security of both uh, of having both parents in their life, that the um, children and the spouse who might be a U.S. citizen don't have to live in fear that their family is going to be separated. As a child, I remember my mother telling me the story of being on the ship and pulling into Ellis Island, and just the incredible feeling she, you know, she had was overwhelming. So my mom um, was born in a small town called Falcade, which is in the Dolomites of Italy, uh, near Cortina. Uh, her name, uh, birth name was Giovanna Gann. Father had to leave the family to go work in the United States because um, their village was very poor, you know, you're just basically farmers, hard winters. World War I broke out, and then the Germans were sent into the town to basically kill everyone. And when the Germans got there, they found that um, there was elderly people, uh, young mothers and young children, and so they let the people live, but once a week they would come through the homes and take what they could. So on the old ship, Italian ship, warship, Pesaro, um, the family left from Genoa. They sailed to Naples where they spent a day and took on many more passengers, mostly children and their mothers, coming to America jo to join fathers and spouse. We sailed from beautiful as uh, Algiers into the vastness of the Atlantic, which was rough and stormy most of the remaining of the cruise. As most of us experienced seasick, the sea was so turbulent at times we thought we would never make it to New York, USA. Finally, we reached New York Harbor, and after spending three days at Ellis Island, we were allowed to resume our journey. A picture of my mother in elementary school. This is my mother right here. Picture of my mother in elementary school. I was reading my mother's um, journal and the part where she almost died because her finger was so mangled and she always had a, a, a bad scar on one finger and as a little girl I used to rub it. But it makes me think of the little immigrant child that just passed away this week of dehydration. Her parents brought her here for a better life. They had to get away from what's going on in their countries and and you know the hardship and and for when I think about these children that are being caged and separated from their families it's heartbreaking it's I think of my grandmother on that ship and that voyage across the Atlantic with her children and where they were susceptible to diseases and all of that but they had they had to take that chance they had to you know give it a go and there, my, my grandfather had to leave, leave his family there and he had to work hard, but he was able to get a spot for them to live. And that's what's going on today with the, the, the fathers that leave and try to come here. And 
you know, make a better life and get away from the, these the terrible dictators. We all want the same thing in life. We want to have shelter. We want to have food. We have children and we want the best for them. We want an education. We want to have health care. And it's hard. It, it just, it, it's just not easy. And we live in a country where we have so much money. So I'm thankful. I am thankful that my parents did the struggles and, uh, and, and came here.